Hey, thank you, Dr. Barbados. I appreciate your frequent hosts. Yeah, no primer. Um, the uh, sometimes I prime and sometimes I don't, and the way the epoxy takes the paint uh, varies greatly between uh, the different epoxies if you don't prime. Uh, and so it's it's kind of like uh, uh, it's speed and preference. And uh, sometimes I prefer not to prime even when I have time to prime. Um, and you know, there will be a varnish coat that will um, help for protection. So um, primer is a little less important in that case. Uh, but the paint sticks fine to the epoxy really whether you prime or not. Uh, hey Gobble Porch, thanks for coming by. Gobble Porch and Dr. Barbados, good crew. Thank you for being so consistent. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure.
So I think I'm going to go with just pretty much uh, black and white. Uh, very similar to what's going on right now and then might add some red um, into the mix. Uh, I mean, <laughs> in all honesty, he's looking pretty close to being done already. Um, I don't see any reason to... I mean, I, it's going to take a long time to finish off all these darn spikes. Um, and horns and teeth. Uh, but I don't think the body's going to take too much time. Then again, you never know. Yeah, a lot of times just super simple painting techniques can do the job very quickly. It kind of pains me when I see um, people like very carefully laying down you know base coats and that sort of thing you know like oh, I'm gonna paint all this color everything all the same and then this part I'm gonna paint everything all the same it's just it's almost like creating work for yourself making it look worse at the same time. <laughs> but then again, I like loose styles and if what you really want is, is a tight paint job, then that's a different approach. Yeah, maybe, you know, you should allow yourself some, uh, uh, some pieces where you're like in I don't care mode, like do everything faster than you're used to. That's a good practice anyway, because, you know, I mean, sort of, you know, sketch mode, I, I almost all of my work at this point is like sketch mode. I, I, I only do a few pieces a year that I'm like, okay, I'm sitting down, I'm going to do the absolute most precise best job I can because um, you, you don't necessarily get a lot more for that. You, you, you know, you have to charge a lot more um, and you can end up with super cool pieces but in terms of like the amount of fun in the piece, the amount of creativity in the piece, you're 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 probably going to have about the same amount of fun. And I mean, in terms of like fun for the viewer, and you're going to um, likely have less creativity because you're going to you're going to be locking yourself down to safe things because you just spent you know. 50 hours working on something and you don't want to risk messing it up. So I love just not giving a crap when you work and then you end up with more creative work.
Oh, Dr. Barbados, I am so happy you feel like you're learning something. That's just great. That's awesome. Um, going backwards here. Um, far and behind. Hey Blands, thanks for coming by. Uh, do I use a rake tool? Where do you apply it in my work? Um, I have a few rakes. It, it is a like consciously known uh, hole in my in my tools. Uh, so uh, sometimes I use a rake. Um, not very often with the epoxy, uh, but more with um, with ceramics and um, I would say uh, you know I, I like you know I have this you know note to self get more rakes that are practical for my use uh, because I think where rakes are considered to be very helpful is uh, for smoothing and clarifying form visually because having the you know the striations in there can help you see what's going on um, uh, so I think uh, I mean you could also use it as a finaling texture tool I certainly use similar things you know texturing tools for adding clay to clay when I'm doing ceramics but that's a whole you know that's just because you you got to do that um, when you're working with ceramics um, uh, So, uh, so yeah, that's that's my rake situation. Inadequate use of rakes, uh, but also you, you know one one reason to use rakes, you know, again in the form clarification deal, is if you're like you're really concerned about symmetry and that sort of thing. So, um, given that um, you know I, I'm like. A, generally I don't give a crap about symmetry like serious symmetry you know like I, there's certain things that I you know where like having a symmetrical composition or something like that might be important to me you know I want something to feel like off balance or something like that um, but in terms of like oh this you know the, the this guy's cheekbone is is not symmetrical here in a way that is you know, uh, you know, I mean, that typical, like, oh, I'm, you know, measuring for symmetry and that sort of thing. I don't care about that. And so if, if you know, if you're working on that level, then, then rakes, I think, are uh, very helpful uh, beyond what I would generally, you know, need them for. Um, this is really interesting what's happening here. You know, these have ripped edges and the black is pooling in the ripped edges, sort of creating like a negative effect here, which normally I would make the edges white, but I'm really hesitant to counteract that because it looks really, really cool. Um, and so the question is, do I emphasize it by making like, you know, by adding white underneath the plates like that. That's kind of the question. I don't know. I don't think it's necessary. Um, it may be not desirable.
Yeah, so Dr. Barbados, back to like doing sketches, um, I, t I really highly recommend just, just committing to working way faster than you're comfortable with and just accepting that you're going to, you know, you may very well end up with something that you really don't like. Um, and see what happens. And the thing is that I feel like working quickly helps me works helps helps me. Um, it it makes me better at working slowly, and working slowly makes me better at working quickly. You know, it's like a it's uh, they a cross training is probably not the right word. They. They help each other. So even if, like, you're, I never want to show anybody any sketch work, even if that's your feeling, uh, that's fine. It still doesn't mean that doing sketch work isn't going to be super helpful um, for uh, improving your, your, your refined work. I, I guarantee that if you, you know, spend time doing sketch work, it will pay off. I guarantee. If anybody remembers that Cajun cook dude. Hey, thanks, Holly Paint. I appreciate that so much. Yeah, Dr. Barbados, there, there's definitely something to be said for if you think it looks good, don't mess with it. And at the same time, sometimes, yeah, it, it's a gamble, right? Because if you do mess with it, like if you're confident that it could look better, then messing with it may be the way to go but you know if you're in sketch mentality which I usually am then yeah I, I subscribe to to that um, general attitude of if, if you like it don't mess with it then again if you never don't mess with it you're going to discover less so and, 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 and with sketching, messing with it is often, you know, often the time to mess with it is when you're sketching because then you're like, you're, you're not in conservative mode. That's a, that's a good word right there is, is like when you're, when you're doing your refined pieces, you're so much more likely to be in a conservative mode of thinking uh, in terms of, you know, the risks you, that you're willing to take. But here, like, the risk is, like, going down a rabbit hole where it's going to take me forever to fire in the, the, um, the white, uh, the white. And furthermore, I think the reason, the biggest reason why I'm not going to do it here is, so what I'm talking about is, um, you know, you got this, these edges where the epoxy is ripped. Um, purposefully when I was sculpting um, exploiting the way your materials break is super important to my process so anyway I've got these rips and it creates these little tiny holes that the paint sucks into so it's darker on the edges and normally my mind is in the you know is in the mindset of edges are light recesses are dark here it's it's the opposite and uh, and it looks really cool and so the question is should I emphasize it more by making the recesses lighter in in between the plates and the reason why I'm not going to do that even though I think it might look really cool is because that will further emphasize the plates and really the plates are just a background they're the frame for 
the focus of the piece. And the focus of the piece is almost always the head, just this simple little skull. So really, you can think of this whole thing just as a frame for this skull and this ridiculous tongue. That's all it is. That's all any monster is, in my mind, pretty much, is a frame for the head. The head is where the, uh, where the character and the emotion is held, mostly. So, I mean, obviously, the frame, the body, is, is going to heavily inform the perception of the head. But ultimately, it's the head. And that's why, like, uh, I was digging through old pieces, and I'm going to throw a bunch of them away. I found this headless thing, like a zombie with no head. It's like, who the fuck cares about a zombie with no head? You know, it's kind of a neat concept, but there's not, there's no character there. Without a head, no character. Um, well, yeah, I, I mean, uh, in general, if you're going to have more detail in one place than another, put the detail in the places that count. And the order of that generally is head and hands. Of course, that's in my brain. That's my world. What other artists' world is obviously is different, you know, because there's people who like sculpt the Venus de Milo's with no head and they're just, they're like interested in the beauty of the body. That's awesome, but it's not what I'm going to sculpt. So yeah, if you think about detail as depth of field instead of detail, then that's how I approach the concept of um, varying degrees of detail. It's depth of field. Do I want the audience to give a shit about the Achilles tendon? Okay, I'm going to sculpt a really nice Achilles tendon and paint it really fancy and precise. But no, I don't care. The Achilles tendon is not going to add character to my piece. I've talked about that before. Um, here I'm lecturing. I'm like a, I'm like the Professor Stanner. Um, uh, so I'm going to stop lecturing and start painting. Um, but I, I believe strongly in these concepts, and, and, uh, and you know, I think a lot of people um, haven't given a lot of thought to it, and so they feel obligations that are created um, through... They're, they're, they're created externally to the artist's thought process. Like the artist hasn't thought, sat down and said to themselves, does the piece have to have the same level of detail all over it? And, you know, I've, I've, I've definitely talked about that before. Like, you look at the work of Hollywood artists, their personal work in general, or frequently, I should say, instead of in general, frequently you see an obsession with detail. A cons consistent, excellent detail across the whole piece. And why is that? I think it can be traced to the fact that when they're doing their professional work, that is the requirement. You have to suspend the audience's disbelief, which means that Achilles tendon better look good so that when there's a shot of the Achilles tendon, the audience doesn't go, ah, oh, that looks fakey. Or more subconsciously, the audience goes, wow, that totally looks real. That could exist. And so you see that in their personal work. Um, I mean, this is all just speculation, of course. Uh, but, it, you know, it's, it's my personal belief that that's what's going on and you know I I think that some of those artists would probably um, feel freed if they just sat back and thought about it you know they vocalize internally uh, you know they ask themselves that question do I care when I'm doing my personal work does my personal work have to look like it came off of, you know, is from the same realm as my professional work? Or, you know, my, my 
uh, movie work. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, anything red? I'm doing great. How are you doing? And thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, Dr. Barbados. I am so happy that, um, you know, I'm making you think about your process and that maybe I gave you some good advice. Um, that's really cool. I'm happy to hear that. keeps pooling on the end of these spikes because gravity zero gravity painting that would be interesting that'd be kind of awesome if paint just like didn't move and you just pushed it around there was no gravity that would be really really weird Wicking would be the only like movement like there'd be I guess you know water tension and Which I guess is what wicking is I suspect I suspect wicking is like an extension of the phenomenon of water tension, but maybe not I don't know These spikes are going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, you know, I have the somewhat of an advantage here. Another reason why I did not prime is that the two epoxies that I used here are different colors. So, you know, I have a jump start on differentiating the spikes. Um, because going in and painting every spike a different base color. See, there's that base color thing. You know, I would not have enjoyed that at all. Um, so, I don't know, I might, I might try to use my airbrush for making the spikes white on the ends. Then again, I could make them black on the ends. That might be kind of cool, too. Um, but in general, in general, I do white, you know, white for edges, black for not edges, generally. Don Lanning. I don't know that I know Don Lanning. I'm probably familiar with his work, but um, 
my head is such a sieve. I'm really bad with remembering names and such. And and actually, I might not know his work because I'm kind of, you know, live in a cave. Mentally, Lex Dragon, thank you so much for following. the spikes. I kind of have a weird idea of maybe using a sponge to finish them. Um, maybe I'll just sit here and make fish sounds for the rest of the broadcast. How would that be? Uh, Lex Dragon, the outer surface here is all epoxy sculpting putty, except for the base, which is plywood covered with uh, elastomeric patch product. So basically just a high quality like um, house patch that has some flex to it, so you know it won't crack. Um, and the e epoxy sculpting putty is like this stuff. But there's two kinds. The, the, the tan is a different kind. He is not primed, so that's why uh, the two different kinds of epoxies show up two different colors. Um, sometimes I prime, sometimes I don't. I've already talked about that. Um, yeah, these spikes are just, um, it's an old product here. It's old product. I don't even think they make this anymore. Sculpt Epox. This is the very first kind of uh, epoxy putty that I ever tried. Um, and I think this is now... I don't think they make it anymore. I bought a bunch of it when they, when they told me they were going to stop making it. Um, I don't have that much of it left. But the Magic Sculpt is, uh, I think the sort of the most uh, versatile of the epoxies that I have used so no reason to go running off and looking for uh, magic for sculpt epox and if like what you want is different colors to do something like what I did here epoxy you could go with epoxy has different colors and there's also tinters that you can put in your epoxy yeah, boy, uh, so it's pretty much down to the spikes, and let's see, if I, if I was to airbrush these, just wondering, like, would I be able to, I'm a crap airbrush artist, uh, but I'm, I might be able to do most of the job with airbrush without messing things up with overspray. Um, Kit Kat, thank you for following. Or KT Cat, if that's preferred uh, interpretation. I'm kind of interested. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna try something different. Um, uh, because I'm thinking about 
using a sponge. I don't know. Also, they aren't really dark enough on the base. Ugh. Maybe I should make the tips black. I almost never do that, but that's not unusual with horns. Uh, Greg, Bark War, thank you so much for following. Um, hey, Dr. Barbados, so do you, do you uh, um, subscribe to the uh, Stan Winston Studio video thing, and how have you enjoyed it, if so? Um, if any, if uh, uh, I don't know that much about it, but my understanding is that Stan Winston Studio has a huge library of how-to videos that look really, really cool, um, and a lot of really um, top-notch artists have videos. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go try going black on the tips, and I'm gonna get out the airbrush. That's what I'm gonna do. Decision made. Uh, Dr. Robetus, I'm not sure what you're talking about without FF. I don't know what FF is. Um, flying fuck? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Some high flow acrylics, I think. Oh my god, that was left open. You big idiot, Doug. Is this one open too? Holy moly, what an idiot I am leaving my paints open. Ooh, I wonder, I have, I've been meaning to. Try this. I have these uh, Createx colors. Tim Gore's Bloodline. Tim Gore is an awesome artist. Um, super cool guy. And he has this line of paint that I've been meaning to try. So it looks like this. Tim Gore's Bloodline. Yeah, it seems like their, you know, their subscription uh, costs were pretty reasonable, you know, especially if you were in, in cram mode and willing to really um, spend a lot of time watching videos for, you know, a month or something, then, man, you know, it seems totally reasonable. on the bottom here, so I don't think this is completely mixed up yet.
I was thinking of throwing some red in there, but I don't know. I might just make the tongue a tiny bit red. But I think I'm going to, for the most part, leave color out of this one. Oh, I need to do those nails too on the do those right now before I forget. Hit those with white. Yeah, that's exactly my my thinking, Dr. Barbados. Too much red on the tongue is going to be a bad idea. Um, especially since, you know, the rest of the piece has no color except for a little bit of brown umber right now. Um, or, excuse me, raw umber. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm in complete agreement that any sort of coloring on the tongue needs to be really, really carefully done. Fortunately, it will be an easy thing to undo. Sometimes those, like, tests are expensive but um, it should be a relatively inexpensive test to, to do actually kind of don't like the emphasis of the striations up here it looks like he's kind of, uh, those wrinkles are actually not really well placed because it looks like he's uh, kind of shrugging, you know, doing a face shrug. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, should I kill you? Uh -oh. What did the Dark Lord say? I can't remember. Um, so, you know, yeah, he's kind of got a little face shrug going on. I shouldn't be emphasizing that. Or maybe I should, I don't know, maybe that's that's his deal. The ambivalent pineapple demon. Be kind of a good name. Speaking of ambivalent, I'm still like it. I'm really, uh, this gets back to the test thing. Like, um, uh, testing, you know, doing, doing things that you're uncomfortable with is good on sketches. So I, I'm, I'm conflicted about making the tips of the horns dark. I'm still feeling scared about that. But I should try it. It definitely goes against my MO to have the tips darker.
Hey, thanks, Holly Paint. I'm glad you find it relaxing. Uh, yeah, ambival the ambivalent pineapple demon. <laughs> Don't know what his backstory is. Um, okay, let's see. Let's see what happens. So this is double test here. Testing new kind of paint. Testing new general scheme with horns. I'll start out with the easiest one, this big one here. It would be good if you could see it. Good if you could see it. <laughs> I need to put it more there. More there. So I need to rotate this camera. If I can. Come on, rotate. There we go. And up. I only have so many hands. Scream at me if I end up off camera. That sound you might be hearing is the airbrush kicking or the air compressor kicking in. The thing is the airbrush, airbrush is great for some things, but in general it just doesn't fit my work all that well. It's really fun to do, but it's so clean and, you know, like, such, like, precise gradations, or, you know, smooth. <laughs> it's probably another arm. I wish. Man, that would be so handy to have three arms. Even just like two and a half. Like if one of them was just like hardly usable at all. That would be awesome still. Now, anyone out there missing a limb is probably you know, feel lucky you got two functioning limbs. I do feel lucky, but I can dream about a third. The thing about you going through, how many spikes are there here? How many spikes? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, I don't know, so somewhere around 35 spikes or 40 spikes or something. That's a pain in the ass, but um, airbrushes are just fun. <laughs> it's just fun doing this. If you don't have an airbrush, you can get one pretty inexpensively and um, you know, you don't have to get an expensive compressor. It's just fun. Feels magical. It's looking fine. Yeah, I like that. It's good. And I, I think I'll take some black and hit the very tips 
you know, maybe with almost black, using like 100% black, I almost never do that. Yeah, so yeah, it does look kind of burnt, which is fine. Maybe instead of like doing like one at a time, I should just kind of do all from one angle while I'm at that angle. Maybe that's a smarter way to do it. I, don't know. I, might, I might forget one, but I think I should be able to check it in the end. Feels kind of faster. You know, there's this concept of like the best way to do something, and like generally, I think people like consider okay, what's the best way? Like, what's the you know, what are your what, what criteria people think about? Generally, it's like looks the best or um, you know the, the the fastest or the sturdiest you know those are typical things that people think about but I think one thing that people um, uh, don't think about enough is what's the funnest way to do it because like especially if you're considering speed, like sometimes sometimes speed really is, you know, critical. Um, but like especially for hobbyists, like the, I mean the whole reason you're probably doing it in the first place. Ooh, did I get see? This is what I was afraid of, like overspray. I don't want that to be. I don't want that to be raw umber there, or. Yeah. I'll try to hit that with white again. Uh, what was I saying? I was saying uh, I think one thing that people like tend to not consider is what's the funnest way to do it. You know, like if it takes you two hours and you ha just had a blast doing it, then that's you know you could you could call that a better way of doing it than the way that took you one hour and you're just like oh god I hate this you know one hour of pain so I'm going to employ a shield um, so you know I mean obviously sometimes speed is you know, super important. Like the boss says, it's got to be done by five today. Better get it done. Then sure, yeah, speed. But um, I think frequently people ignore what's fun. And given that they call it artwork for a reason, because it's, it's work. Um, People should consider the, you know, like hunt, hunt for the fun way to do it. And the fun way for one person is obviously going to be different than the fun way for another. So what I'm saying is the best way is totally subjective and depends on what criteria you're um, taking into account.
Yeah, I think Undead Dragon is a great project for epoxy. Um, I would start small um, for your first epoxy projects just to get used to it. Um, but that's just generally, you know, just general advice for any new medium. Okay, I feel like I'm poisoning myself. I'm going to turn on my fan. Sorry, it's going to create noise. Sorry about the noise. Yeah, that's um, that's the truth. Artists are constantly killing themselves with their materials, and it's not a good thing. Well, this paint so far is working wonderfully. My brush has not shown any signs of clogging. So. Hooray for Tim Gore's bloodline. I had a lavalier headphone that I used when I had the, you know, like that, that was perfect for when the fan was running. Um, but it started, like, not working very well. Maybe I should look into getting a better one of those. Maybe just the battery ran out, I don't know, I should test it. Yeah, this is working. Black tips. I, I think horns actually, are, it's a very common thing for horns to do, get black on the tips. It's just not something that I'm used to doing. Here, I need a freaking third hand so I can hold this at an angle and put my, my, um, blocker on there at the same time.
Hey, Tinkimi, I'm doing well. Thanks so much for, you know, missing my missing my stream when I'm not around. It, it makes me feel good. Or, you know, sorry that, you know, I don't do it more often, but life. Uh, someday, it, things are really crazy right now, so someday I, I honestly hope that I will have a regular schedule. Um, I really enjoy the Twitch community. So, um, so someday I plan on having a regular schedule. But thanks for saying you missed it. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, that's that's I need. I should do like a a, a a Kickstarter for a new arm. Uh, uh, oh well, congratulations on ending your school year, Tinkimi. Um, what? Uh, do I already know what your what like school year you're in or what you're studying or whatever? Sorry if I do, uh, but uh, you know I would like to hear again if you don't mind telling me uh, what you're studying and such. Uh, Yeah, Dr. Barbados, the, the maintenance of the airbrushes, I kind of take a I don't give a crap attitude about it now. I used to be really uptight about it. And like this specimen, when I first got my airbrush, uh, this is the first airbrush I ever bought, I think. And it's a relatively expensive one. Um, this is an Iwata HPSB that I bought in the 90s. Um, and so Iwata is a is a darn good brand, and uh, so like, the first time I used this, I, I was so uptight, um, like oh I gotta go clean it now. And now I just like take a pretty I don't give a crap attitude about it, and it holds up fine. I mean, if you let's see if I can get it to focus, focus, focus. There, can you see it's filthy um, I just don't I don't worry about it too much and if it ever stops working well I just you know give it a good soak so you know maybe maybe try taking a more laissez-faire attitude about your airbrush cleaning and I mean, that kind of gets back to that attitude of like, what's the best way? What's the best way to clean your airbrush? Well, if you're never going to use it because cleaning it is, you know, horrible, then don't clean it very much. You know, just dump it in a pot of water or whatever, you know, and then clean it when it's just not working at all. Probably Tim Gore would be like, you know, dude, you're killing them all the wrong stuff. But... You know, if it keeps you from airbrushing. Then again, you know, airbrushing for me is just, it's a rarity. I almost never use this thing. It's fun though. Oh, excellent. 3D special effects. Cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. I, I, you know, I was in the 3D world for a long time, but I didn't spend a lot of time doing effects. I did some for my own shorts. Um, and always had fun, you know, doing 
particle effects or whatever. Uh, but uh, uh, I, you know, never got super into it. Doctor, I'll see you soon. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, Tenkimi airbrushes are hard to use, I would say, if you're doing super technical work. They're easy to use the way I use them. Um, and, and some airbrushes are harder to use than others. Like This is like a single action airbrush. It is a simpler process. This is a double action where the trigger, you, you push the trigger down to get the air to flow. So push it down, the air flows but no paint comes out. And then you pull the, the trigger back, and then more and more paint comes out as the farther you pull the trigger back. So that's a double action, if I'm remembering the terminology uh, correctly. And uh, but I use it. I use it like a, a total noob. I just I pretty much always just push all the way down, and then just slowly pull back. Um, so. Like a, I think an accomplished airbrush artist would be, you know, modulating the push down and pull back all the time, changing it depending on what they want to do. But in general, I'm just doing super simple work. So I would say, uh, you know, asking is is an airbrush hard to use? It's kind of uh, it, it basic. It just depends on what you're doing with it. If you're if you're doing super simple stuff, no, it's not very hard to use. But if you want to paint, you know, um, amazing airbrush paintings, yeah, it's hard to use. Hey, welcome back, Barbados. Okay, so... I think I think I got brown. Oh no, I gotta hit it from the other side. Here. I was about to say I think I'm done with the brown. Definitely not done with the brown. Sorry.
Now am I done with the brown? heavy setup for airbrushing. Yeah, sorry Tinkimi, the motor you hear is my fan because uh, I'm killing myself with the paint right now. I'm not wearing a respirator. So I turned a fan on to try to get some airflow out so that I'm, so I'm killing myself more slowly. Um, I'll talk about airbrush setup after I go clean this thing real quick, get the brown out of there so I can move on to black. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so uh, what do you need for an airbrush? Uh, basically, I think all you need is an air compressor, which you could spend probably anywhere between 50 bucks to a thousand bucks or more for, but you'd be fine spending, you know, a hundred bucks. I'm sure you could get it. Uh, compressor that you'd be happy with. Um, forever I just used a, a, like a Home Depot style big tank compressor. Noisy as hell. So in that sense it wasn't good. But uh, it works just fine. And I think I even bought it used because I, I got, bought it way back in the 90s. I don't remember exactly where I bought it. But I think I got it used probably for almost nothing. So uh, you need a compressor, uh, you need an airbrush, you need a hose to, com to 
connect the airbrush and the um, compressor. You need some sort of a. Um, uh, you might need some sort of a. Uh, like a. Well, you know, if you buy a compressor that's made for airbrushes, it'll come with it. But some kind of a. Um, what do you call it? A, a water trap or you know a regulator type situation with the water trap on the compressor to connect the air hose to. Uh, you need a, a respirator or a fan is wise. Uh, you need paint. That's pretty much it. Mineral spirits to finish and smooth sculpting. So anything you can use to smooth epoxy. Water. Yeah. Water's the way to go. So now I'm, I'm using a, this is not bloodline, and I think I might be noticing a difference already. This is just, um, golden high flow acrylics. And this is fine, I mean I've been happy using high flow acrylics, it's really nice because I, I, you know, I can use them. Um, you know, I, I use mostly golden products anyway, so, you know, I'm, I'm very comfortable with that, but... Um, but I'm feeling like already I kind of noticed a difference. Oh, thanks, Dr. Barbados. I'm glad you're looking okay to you. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's not a bad choice. Uh, it's good to stretch out and try something new. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how it's working. The black on the tips definitely helps.
out of paint or what? That was a big difference between the two, for sure, huh? Chalk it up for bloodline. Chalk one up for bloodline. I guess there's some of this. I gotta go and clean it again. Shoot. Uh, should be a little faster hopefully this time. Yeah, Bloodline's expensive too. High quality paint just, you know, expensive.
Yeah, I'm sold. This the, the bloodline behaves so much better than this stuff. I think you know if I ever get to the point where I'm doing a lot of airbrush work, definitely worth it. Um, uh, getting paint that's specifically made for. Airbrush is kind of clogged up again here. Oh, maybe I'm just out of paint. Yeah, it's working again, so that's good. But it's still it's still definitely not working as well as the bloodline. So go buy some Tim Gore bloodline and tell him that Doug said it was good. Come on, I only need a little bit more. Cooperate. This is where the fun drains out of your airbrush. Alright, paint it again. Last time. Before I have to clean it, you know, the final time. Oh, I hear what you're saying, Dr. Barbados. Yeah, pain in the butt.
right. Anything else that could use the airbrush treatment while I'm in here? Maybe just come over here a little bit. Yeah, it's a magical tool. Just getting some shading done in here as long as the airbrush is out. Why not? think of several reasons why not. I don't want it to make it look, you know, like smooth airbrush work. But, you know, just a little bit of shading here and there. Airbrushing is hard to undo because you know, like it's pretty much dry on contact. Okay, I'm stop while I'm ahead. Okay. Alright, I'm going to go and clean my airbrush for the last time. Really, not clean it, just sort of dump it in water. Okay, so, oh, let's see. Uh, yeah, t uh, T. Gore, Tim Gore, um, he doesn't like you? What's, what's up with that? Um, I mean, 
mean, he doesn't sell the paint directly. You buy it wherever. It's just it's his brand, or you know, it's branded. He's you know like. Back here, a little lackluster. And being the back, it's not the star of the show. I think the value range needs to be increased a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Just extending the value range a little bit. It's going to help a lot. Mm. Yeah, Dr. Barbados, that that's unfortunate. Um, sad thing is that it is not good, but understandable that he would draw that conclusion because it happens all the time. But it also happens all the time that people, you know, have parallel evolution. 
So, yeah. Chances are at this point he doesn't even remember. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I have mixed feelings about it when when I think that somebody's like directly copying my work. Like on the one hand, you know, it's a compliment. On the other hand, uh, financially, you know, I don't think anyone's taken anything away from me given this, you know, the scale that I work at and, you know, it's so like, but probably my biggest emotion is just sadness that, you know, don't you want to, don't you want to do your own thing? Art is just a series of people copying people, you know, I mean, there's, there's an element of copy in everything everybody does, has to be. Oh, thanks, Doug. That means a lot to me. Does that mean I'm not fired? Um... Anyway, yeah, art, you know, we're all building our artwork off of previous generations, There's, you know. I just make demons and zombies all the time. You know, like I'm copying the dude who originally thought of demons and zombies. In some manner, you know. That's pretty funny. Renegotiated my pay cut. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one, Doug. Uh, I, I, I'm good. Family's good. Thank you. How are you doing? Thanks for coming by. Renegotiated the pay cut. That totally sounds like a Dilbert thing. Uh, that's really funny.
Yeah, I, that, I can understand Dr. Barbados. I, I would, uh, uh, yeah, I, that sucks. I totally understand. I would try to take a step backwards and just not worry about it. Just do your, do what you want to do. Do your own, you know, follow your heart. Don't. You know, if your heart is similar to somebody else's heart, which inevitably it is, don't let it sway you too much. Ultimately, you do the work that comes from you, and it will show. And, you know, the people who, who think you're copying them, they'll eventually see the differences. Hola, Gianfranco. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, I mean, copying is the ultimate compliment. It just, um, it's just the person being uh, complimented is also being offended at the same time. That's the that's the tricky part. All right, what's going on? What does he need? It's definitely not quite done or not done. Not done yet. I'm going to try just a teeny tiny whitening here. Just a teeny tiny. Gianfranco, thank you so much for following. Much appreciated. Oh yeah, absolutely, uh, Doctor Barbados. Yeah, I mean that's that, that's a uh, that's what I'm saying about parallel evolution. You, you know that that's a uh, that's a curse of living in a world with millions of people on the internet. You know, there's th there's always going to be someone doing something similar to you. Um, and always going to you, you know there, there's no one out there who or you know very few people out there that are going to be immune from some sort of uh, accusation false accusation of copying I mean it's you know it's, it's inevitable given the number of people doing artwork and the ease of access So 
So yeah, I mean it, it's uh, there's two things going on. There's there's copying and then there's not copying that is seen as copying. And uh, they're both unfortunate. It's unfortunate that you know people get accused. So what I'm saying is you, you should ignore that. You should ignore you should ignore the accusations and do the artwork that you want to do. Yeah, I mean, I, you should go back, go backwards a little bit, and do what you want to do. You know, don't let don't let Tim Gore. Uh, don't let an email from Tim Gore change the direction of your artwork. I mean, however nice a guy he is, if he's wrong, he's wrong. And, uh, and you could be leveling exactly the same accusation at him. So, whatever. Just do, you know, do what you want to do. He's not going to sue you anyway. So I think there is a need for a little bit more color in here because if it was like all a black and white piece, that would be one thing. But these horns have a different color. And so that's like admitting that the piece is not a black and white piece. And so given that admission, it needs a little bit more color somewhere. So definitely going to try the tongue, although that does make me a little nervous because like really light red just ends up oftentimes looking pink. But what if it's like a purpley pink? I mean, there's nothing wrong. Pink is kind of a gross color anyway, so pink would be fine. Um, Oops, that's maybe a bad idea. I was just thinking, just like, just get a little bit of brush work in there. But I don't want to fall down that rabbit hole because then I'm going to be brush working them all. So I'm going to undo that. Undo, undo. Um. Yeah, you know, I think what I might do <laughs> uh, Well, what I mean is that uh, Oh, see, I'm behind here Yeah, put your stamp on it. Um, yeah, just, you know, be true to yourself. That's the most important thing. Be true to yourself. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, pink is definitely a gross color. Um, pink is definitely a gross color. 
Um, I'm trying to think of the name of this artist. What is his name? Look up. Oh gosh, darn it! What is it? The fleshlings. Is that the flesh? The fleshettes? Fleshlets. I think that's it. Fleshlets. If you haven't seen Fleshlets, and I'm having a super nice guy. I cannot remember his name though. Uh, great sculptor. His work makes me cringe. Um, the Fleshettes or Fleshlets. That's proof positive that pink is a gross color. Um, yes, Jonathan Payne, exactly. Um, you know, those things are so gross. <laughs> Uh, they are so well done and so disgusting. Um, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that, that, that's like the most powerful use of pink ever, is pains. What are the fleshettes? Is that what it is? Or fleshlets? I can't remember. Seeing them online is one thing. Seeing them in person is completely another. So unabashedly disgusting <laughs> yeah okay, let's see what this looks like if I just get a little mirror the horn color a little bit in here I think that's gonna work help tie those horns to the rest of the body. There, yeah, that's subtle, but I think you might not even be able to see it. Maybe I'm doing it too subtle. Um, even in person, but yeah, do it slightly heavier in here. Yeah, that's gonna, that works without having to like add a ton of color. It changes the piece quite a bit. And it's interesting because I was talking about firing white in there and this is, is much cooler given the horn color in my opinion. So happy with this change. It gets rid of my worry. Yes, all right, that's cool. Uh, yeah, now you can see it. Um. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Is that the first time you've seen those Dr. Barbados? They are just totally gross and so well done. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, oh.
All right. Yeah, that's going to work. Yay. I'm happy with how that's working. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to look away and yet it's hard to look for long. It's it's hard period. Yeah, it, 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 the funny thing is, though, the dude is totally, like, uh, I mean, I don't know him well, but just, you know, from brief interaction with him, he's totally, like, sweet, nice guy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't come off as creepy at all. Hey, Keith Keeson, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, and yeah, Doug, he's totally a master of flesh tones. He's, he's a master of many things. Flesh tones being one of them. Kind of like uh, Morgan's Mutations is a master of... 
of disgusting teeth. Oh, I, I, I see. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just want like a cleansing shower <laughs> and to be, uh, you know, I don't know. Powerful, powerful work. Yeah, it's kind of amazing though that they aren't silicone. In a way, I mean, it's kind of more impressive that he, you know, achieves that. Uh, that level of. What's the right word? Like. Uh, visceral. Fleshiness. And I think he's using polymer clay. But maybe he casts them as well. Maybe the resin cast, I don't know. I think originally they, he was doing polymer clay work. Okay, so I think that's a big improvement. And whether whether, like, maybe these claws should get a tiny little touch of it. It's a little bit more than tiny. Just ties it all together much, much better. Big moth flying around. If you see, oh, see that big moth?
Come on. Totally, totally tied together better. Side. This this like brown red sort of flavor. And just see what that does with a little bit of that. A little bit of that raw sienna still in the, in the mix in the paint there. So this is,
This brush is not quite long enough to get into that crack. Yeah, you know, I think though I think that would stick out too much, and as uh, I think Dr. Barbados was already warning, uh, if it's too if it's too colorful, it's going to draw attention away from the skull. I feel like the skull needs some kind of coloring up there. I'm not sure. I might even try a little green tint. Bring in a little green. Seems like it might be fun. Um, And that would make the tongue look a little redder, too. Uh, I feel like the skull needs something. Something, something. Green, blue purple, something on the cool side. Just maybe a teeny, teeny tiny hit of like green shading. Yeah, I want to cut this green with Some raw umber, probably. I jumped. I thought I was dropping my bottle. And I jumped. way out. Some more airbrush medium. It's a nice uh, real uh, watery thinner or medium. with this. Whoops. Dangerous to have random globs of paint on your hand lest you transfer them to the work. Okay, so I'll start underneath. That's really subtle.
I don't like it. Nope, bad, bad decision. That subtle is fine. Just kind of as a, a green shadow. That's fine. Slightest hint of it elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm thinking, Dr. Barbados. Is like, as long as it doesn't exist, it's fine. I mean that definitely added some uh, some depth to the piece. Yeah, it's, just, it's almost like, see, I think I'm, the way I'm thinking now is I'm going to um, probably make the base a greenish color, and then it's kind of like a ground reflection, you know? Yeah, that works. That works fine. I'm going to punch up the white again a little bit in the skull.
Yeah, yeah, not a... I mean, it could be, you know, a weird, spooky, greeny light thing, but yeah, I... Although he is such a dark piece, having a light base might work well. Um... Yeah, let's just go ahead and see what happens. Put some... Put some green on the base. You can't see that. That's, that's, that's not going to stay like that. It's going to change. For sure. when I put a little bit of this quinacridone violet. Now that I'm like streaming, I have to actually learn how to say these things rather than just like make a note of them in my brain without making an actual sound.
Bye over there. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, Doug, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Yeah, you too. Have a have a great uh, have a great long weekend. back looks pretty kind of monotone lackluster I gotta admit Hey, how's it? Hey. I'm not sure how to change that. I could. Could try uh, this. Adding. Adding a built-in highlight to these, uh, I think that helps actually. Yeah, Dr. Robetus really is this how many how many people are going to kill themselves with fireworks weekend. And when I was a kid, I certainly was not above trying to do that. Did a lot of stupid stuff with fireworks. Probably the dog's least favorite weekend of the year. Oh, is that, um, so are you in, you're in uh, England, or where are you, is that, uh, I'm just guessing that because you said screw the Brits, but is that uh, Guy Fox Day or something? Educate an ignorant American. Oh good, I got it right.
that's that's my triumph of the day right there that you know I take one take one and run Yeah, I think that actually helped a lot. Just putting tiny little white highlight on the back spikes. And I don't feel the need to do it from the front at all. I think it would be a mistake from the front, uh, quite likely. So, gee, he's really close to being done now, I think. Very close. Scream out if anything's bugging your eye. Do not worry. I will not feel obligated to to will not feel obligated to follow your thoughts, but I might. It might help a lot. Who knows?
sorry, I can't see. I'm not doing the most exciting thing now, just putting the signature on. Super, thanks Barbados. Yes, close, very close. All right.
just a little bit more. Darkness in the base here. Aye, aye, aye. All my brushes fall down. There. Hmm.
Yeah, Barbados, a lot of times simplicity is the way to go. And definitely when, like, overdone bases, it's like, okay, for, like, miniature modeling, I understand that's a, you know, a style and showing off your terrain building, but, um, you know, if your emphasis is the creature, why bother? Unless, it, you know, it's really helping to establish the environment. Um, so, yeah, simplicity is, is uh, certainly uh, sometimes the way to go. Hey, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will, I hope to see you again soon, I say, as I find tiny little things to fix here and there. Hey, thanks so much, Blands and Barbados. I appreciate the positive feedback. See you all next time. Thanks again. Uh, when will I be back? I don't know. Um, there's crazy things going on right now. So um, please uh, get, um, you know, put on the notification thing. Uh, and eventually, Blands, I hope to have a schedule. I honestly intend to hey zigzag sorry that you came in at the end thanks so much for high in and buying um, so yeah I, I honestly hope to someday have a regular schedule um, but right now I just can't um, so please put on notifications and hopefully it works out for you um, and uh, yeah, someday I will have a schedule. Adios.